Hello, I'm Chad Nash with Nash Tech. We created a trading bot to enter and exit the market with the best settings so that the bot can trade on your behalf and you can get your time back. Stop letting the big Wall Street guys win while you're stuck trading manually with emotion. Do you ever find yourself trading and then suddenly realize that you're changing your stop losses and your targets? Or you start to get emotional and maybe enter at the wrong times when you know you shouldn't? Well, we understand that because we've been there. And with 15 years of software experience and several years of day trading experience, we created the perfect bot for this situation. Epic Bid was created to continuously set up low offer bids throughout the trading session. Okay. Let's go ahead and get started on the next video here. So uh, with the last two videos, we covered both the Epic Bid indicator, general setup in, uh, on the chart, and we also covered some general uh, the strategy, setting up the strategy, and how to use the basic backtesting using Strategy Analyzer. Um, so the next part here, we're going to be using the optimization portion of Strategy Analyzer, and we're going to be saving some templates and, and then going ahead and enabling strategies to use on a simulator account, which hopefully, if things go well, you're ready to go live then. Um, so just a couple quick things. Uh, just want to post the disclaimer here again that we're not directly affiliated with NinjaTrader. Um, it's a separate company. We build on top of that, that organization. And I encourage you to check out their videos on YouTube. Um, and, and again, there's lots of other videos related to strategy analyzer, optimization, market replay, tick data, uh, simulation accounts. All of those uh, videos, we, you know, we're going to do our own videos on, <clears throat> on our uh, indicators and strategies, but there's plenty of other resources out there for you to check out. Uh, but just posting this disclaimer here, letting you know we're not directly affiliated uh, with NinjaTrader. Let's get started. <clears throat> um, again, to, to do this, you first want to have NinjaTrader opened. You want to go to New, Strategy Analyzer. Um, from there, it's going to load it. I already have it loaded here. Um, you know, in the last video, we were running some back testing, and I just left the same window open. Um, this was back testing. I did show you a, a cool tip at that point where you can back test all of uh, a bunch of different instruments so we selected all the futures um, and for a month period uh, with this setup <clears throat> uh, so it's kind of a cool thing uh, just because it's not optimizing but it's it's optimizing in a sense that you're back testing all of those same static sort of variables up against um, a number a, a different number of instruments so let's pull up Let's just pull up the MNQ here. I think we've been using that a lot. Maybe the NQ. Okay. Um, MNQ, open strategy tab. All right. So the main difference that you're going to see with backtesting versus uh, optimization is backtesting is really a static set of variables um, within Strategy Analyzer. And so you choose the back testing option up here, and here are the variables, right? The EMA trend, the entry type, uh, the profit target down here, it's set to 115 ticks. Um, if you're looking at all of these settings and having questions, uh, you can check the, the blog post. Uh, we are working on user guides, but we also covered uh, the majority of all of these settings at, in the video prior to this one. So look for a link. To that video at the bottom here in the description um, and while you're at it and you're looking for that go ahead and uh, download the trial at www.nashtech.xyz slash trial uh, it's a free trial and you can follow along with us as we go through optimization for this okay so what's the main difference between back testing and optimization well as you see here back testing we have all the variables we have the profit target we have um, we're waiting this many bars before a new trade. Um, we are setting up a standard stop or standard profit target of 150 ticks, right? So 
What if we wanted this to be 100 ticks instead of 150? Well, we would have to go in here for backtesting and run it with a profit target of 100 ticks instead of uh, 150. And we see the results come up. Um, really not that many trades. Uh, eight trades over a month, not that many on this, if we were this particular setup. For optimization, it's a little bit different. So we go to optimization. Uh, we'll discuss the walk forward and the multi-objective optimization later. But we're going to go to optimization. And let's just take a look at, at what things look like here. Okay, so we have the same variables. But now we have where we can expand this. Okay, so different entry types. What if we uh, recent high-low look back, right? That was set to 90. But what if we wanted to set that to 30? Maybe a maximum of 120. And increments, oops, that would be a lot. <laughs> um, and let's say increments of 15. Okay, so this is the main part of optimization. Now, we haven't changed anything else in, in, in terms of uh, any other variables, but you get to see how each and every variable, wait, you know, let's look at the next one, wait X bars from new trading day. Well, let's say we wanna try and go from zero, we're not waiting at all, all the way to five, and we're gonna do increments of one. The point is that every single increment we have is creating a new iteration whenever we go to run this. And that means it can be very time consuming. I suggest that you start out with only optimizing a couple variables just so you can get a feel for how your system is gonna handle um, the optimization. Because sometimes you end up thinking, oh, this would be cool. Let's do, let's do zero to 50 in increments of one. And, and let's do um, a profit target of standard uh, but let's just do 50 ticks to 1,000 ticks, right? Well, when you start doing that, each time you're setting up a new iteration, and the more variables you have in those, in those iterations, the longer it's going to take. So we've only changed two different variables here. Um, we will change a couple more. Let's go ahead and change profit target. But instead of doing increments of something like 1, we could do increments of 25. So 150, oops, we'll do a maximum of 250, and we'll do increments of 25. Um, so we, we've, now we've changed quite a few things. I think for optimization, previously whenever you were looking at the charts, uh, I told you to, to go ahead and plot everything, but we don't really want to plot because this can be very time consuming, and, and for each iteration, even if it just takes a little bit of time, it's not necessary. We don't want to plot things that are going to be time consuming. We want it to really use this uh, optimization engine um, the best. So stop loss, let's just set this to be standard. And we're not going to, let's not mess with the stop loss for this optimization. Um, we're not going to change anything else. So we changed about three or four variables. We created quite a few different uh, settings for those. And we're going to leave this at a five minute interval here. Um, and we will include commission, include some slippage here as well. Um, this is important here. You're looking at, what are you looking at? Max profit factor is, is going to be the default from NinjaTrader. S sometimes that's also taking into account um, a lot of other settings like. Uh, you know, your max drawdown and things like that. If you're just simply looking at max net profit, that's also an option. Um, I usually leave it at max net profit or max profit uh, uh, profit factor. Um, keep the best results. We can go with maybe 20 if we want to keep more results. And let's go ahead and hit run. We may have to pause the video depending on how long this says it's going to take. But this will give you an idea. Okay, so I don't think we have to pause the video here. It's, it's gonna take about two or three minutes, but let me just say that starting out with only changing a few settings is gonna be helpful to you because it's very frustrating when you think you have everything configured just as you want, and then you realize, oh, it's gonna take uh, three days to finish this optimization. 
Um, I will use this time to tell you that we do optimize against many instruments, uh, including all the futures and micros that are very common and commonly traded with NinjaTrader. Um, we also backtest against uh, futures contracts and crypto uh, futures with Binance and others. So you can download those templates. Um, we, we make the templates available on trial versions uh, for at least 30 to 60 days uh, past the prior date. Um, uh, if you are a subscriber or a lifetime license holder of Epic Collection or any products, we make templates available uh, sometimes daily, weekly, definitely monthly um, for the newest and latest templates to, that we've optimized. Uh, so you can download those at www.nashtech.xyz slash templates. Um, so we're going to let this currently keep running running 378 iterations this is the September contract of the MNQ but I found that you can backtest MNQ or MES or any of these even if the contract is for uh, September you're able to go back it's gonna see if you backtest this in May it's gonna use the prior uh, data for the MNQ almost like a perpetual sort of futures contract at least that's what it has seemed like to me in the past. Um, so let's let this finish up and see about the best scenarios that come up for us. Do 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 do. Okay, so sometimes uh, we're getting some high profit factors in here, but. I don't know how much I trust anything. I don't trust anything that's it's usually 100%, okay? So this is probably a good indicator that something's kind of a little bit off here. Um, could be our stop loss was just so tight that, um, uh, let's see, we went with a stop loss of 200, so I guess that's not too tight. Um, I started looking anywhere, we're looking at at least 10 or more trades. So um, as we go through here, if you hover over the parameters, you're going to see which parameters this was using. So this was using a look back of 75, if you see that there. This is using, um, remember the variables we changed were the look back number, the bars required before entry, and the profit target. So this has a profit target. Might be hard to see, but if you hover over those, you can, you can get an idea. Um, but let's say this had 12, 13 trades. Let's go with one of these down here. We had a lot profitable, but let's open this in a new strategy tab. So when you open it up in a new strategy tab, you're actually now looking at it from a backtesting standpoint because the variables are going to be static. Okay, but as you can see, so we're, we're back testing. We've now we've changed up to back testing up here when we loaded it. The optimizer is what came up with the results of using this particular look back. Um, uh, okay, I'm sorry. When I said 75, that wasn't the bar's look back. That was the profit target. So um, this had a profit target of 75 and a stop loss of 200. Okay, so. That was this particular optimization setup. If I felt feel like it looks really strong, I would probably save this as a template. We can go ahead and plot now because it's not going to take very long to plot and see what, what the setups look like um, here. So we'll run it. And now that we have them plotted, we can go on the chart and we can see... Um, this also had weight X bars from new trading day at zero. Um, so, not really sure some of the situation here. Ah, we don't need debug mode enabled. That probably took a lot out of it actually in terms of time. Um, ah, so I didn't see this before we started, but it's a good thing to mention. The reason we don't have that many trades is because I had selected use custom trading hours. So 
we would want to run this optimization again without doing that. Um, so clearly now we get a lot more trades. We get 49 trades um, instead of 12 because we were only trading during custom trading hours. Um, so what we could do now, though, just to show you some other areas, we could look at the analysis and we could say, you know, it looks to me like our best hours of the day tend to be uh, 8 a.m. Um, in this particular case. Our worst hours of the day probably are market open. So we could keep that in mind for the optimization. We're going to go back, though, and optimize this again because I did not really realize that we had debug mode enabled. Let's see, where do we start the optimization? Here we go. You can always tell when you're optimizing because you have these to expand and you have um, uh, the value. Th this will tell you, you know, the value minimum, high, low range price here, weight X bars from trading day. Let me give you a little tip here. You can change these directly. Instead of expanding this, you can change this directly by typing these in. So you can do one. Uh, semicolon 10 semicolon 2 and that will actually change it directly for you the 1 the 10 and the 2 it's a quick tip if you get start getting used to optimizing things you can run through that much faster than expanding this typing in 1 typing in 10 typing in 2 um, we'll do the same thing here for stop loss so stop loss we'll do um, 50 325 so that's going to say we want to start the minimum of 50 ticks maximum of 300 ticks and we're going to do increments of 25 for the optimization um, we're going to leave we have custom use custom trading hours true we could optimize that where it could optimize uh, you know trying different time frames but we're going to set this to false. What we are going to do, though, which is pretty cool, you know, that, that last time it did take a while already, so keep that in mind. But if you were going to lunch and you wanted to check this, let's say we're, we're on a five-minute time frame, we can come down here below, choose Optimize Data Series, check that. And now you notice up here the value of the time limit of the, I'm sorry, the value of the data series has now set to one minute. So we could try this at, let's say, five minutes to, uh, let's say, 20 minutes in increments of five. Um, so this is going to actually change, you know, the candlestick bar uh, instrument to see if sometimes, sometimes uh, things might run better. I know our Epic Profits and Epic Entry Indicators, Epic Squeeze, they seem to run better on 7-minute charts, 11-minute charts. If it optimizes at that, great. Let's run it at that. Um, later on, when we're setting up simulator accounts, I'll do another video on this, but sometimes you can set up you know, a whole batch to all run on a 7-minute, a 5-minute, a uh, 11-minute. I even create different sim users to do that. Um, so you can get a better idea uh, for what time frame seems to be working the best for your strategy. Okay, so likely this is going to take a lot longer now. Uh, we've got 3,400, um, uh, and this is just on my development laptop, not on our, we have some pretty high performance servers that we run our optimizations on. And it looks like this is going to take about an hour to finish. So we will, well, could be longer. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pause the video for now, and we will come back to this once it's finished and work from uh, the next pieces. For okay, uh, we are back. We have finished the optimization, and let's just run through a few things. First of all, I had made a mistake whenever I was initially setting this up before it, it ran and I stopped the camera. Um, we had selected the Optimize Data Series here, but when we did that, uh, I had entered, I think, five minutes and a maximum of five minutes up here. So I had to start that over. Um, we changed this to be minimum of five, maximum of 30 minutes, in increments of two. 
Um, so that actually uh, ran still pretty quickly. Uh, this is the MNQ September 2021 um, futures contract. So it's back testing from early May to uh, a couple days ago here in June of 2021. Um, so this took about, about an hour to run and now we're looking at the results. So if you were following along um, on your version or the trial version, uh, just make sure that you didn't leave minimum and maximum for the data series value because that would cause a problem. All right, so let's look at the results here. Uh, again, I don't really look at anything that's too, if I see anything that looks way too profitable or too good to be true, I'm a little hesitant. Um, these look pretty good. You know, we're in a range of one to um, 1.5 to 3.0. So why did we? Why are we looking at profit factors higher in the list than uh, than we're looking at 1.7 at the start of the list? Why is that? Well, it's because our gross net profit was higher with that setup. Um, and why is the profit factor less? It's because the max drawdown is also uh, more. Uh, it's a it's a larger drawdown than you had down here. So here we have a 3.0 profit factor, but again, and this is later on where we can get into multi-objective, we have it set to max net profit. If we had selected max profit factor, we won't run it again, but I'm assuming it would probably have given us the 3.0, maybe even some, it could have found some other scenarios, but we selected max net profit. Um, I think I would probably would go down here though, I mean, given the fact that I, I prefer a minimum drawdown. And the thing that makes me a little hesitant about this other setup right below it is, you know, you're looking at 17 trades versus 59 trades. That could be a, a positive thing though, right? Less commission. But I tend to trust more trades um, than, that's, that's three times as many trades. And, uh, the, and it's still profitable. So, you know, one or two of the trades, a couple, five of the trades in, in this setup of 17, um, and you could start looking at that max drawdown could change very quickly, okay? So um, a few tips. If you hover over the mouse here, you're gonna see all the different setups. It's gonna start each of the, of the setups here with the parameter for the optimized data series. So if you see that, that's a five minute data series bar. If you see here 11, you can hover over it, but you can also just see right there. It's the first parameter 11. Okay. So, um, let's look at some of these setups. So that was a five minute with a 45 recent high, low look back. And this is an 11 minute chart with a 90 bar look back. So it's looking at the low and the high, of uh, 11 minute data series. It's looking back 90 bars back. Would be interesting to see what this looks like on the chart. Um, if you remember, we don't recommend plotting anything when you're doing an optimization. Uh, so once you're running on a strategy though, we do suggest it because you're gonna wanna look at the analysis for uh, what hours of the day were trading best, especially when you're looking at something like 59 trades. It might be that it gets even better if you eliminate maybe uh, market open and, and session, you know, session close. Um, so again, we right clicked inside of the strategy analyzer. We opened it in a new tab. What that does for us is it immediately changes this to be back test again. So all the variables that were, we were set up with that optimization. So we've got 90 bar look back, and we're gonna go ahead and plot. One thing we haven't really done with this on the optimization is we haven't plotted anything on the EMA bias. So I like to narrow down um, to you know some, some of the ranges that you might want. For example, when optimizing recent high low look back, you know you're not gonna want maybe three bars, um, and you probably know you're not gonna want 300. So if you start to narrow that down to somewhere in between a range, in this case, uh, probably 
somewhere in a 30 to 120, I don't know. That's what you're optimized for. Then you can go up here later and optimize maybe only on this variable for the EMA. Is it best to trade above as your trend um, EMA? If you only wanted to go long, short, you know, check out the other videos where we go through each of these parameters. Um, but in this particular case, I would narrow down a couple different setups and then I would optimize again on maybe just the EMA trend and maybe the stop loss, something like that. Um, so in this setup, we're looking at 11 minute. We're going to change it so we're plotting the, um, the ever, everything from the arrows and the lines from the bid price, the high low, the profit target. And the reason we're going to do that is because now that we've, you know, we're not running through 42,000 iterations. I think that's how many iterations it was running. It took about an hour. Um, now we can go to chart and we can actually see the setups. Remember, these are 11 minute bars. So we can sort of run through here. Um, remember, if you remember this, this only had 17 trades as well. Um, so it looks pretty solid though. Um, I would definitely run this on a SIM account. Remember gray bars are an execution that is not gonna, gonna fire ever because it's set over here bars required before re-entry okay um so let's just look through this setup it looks pretty strong i would set this up and i would save it as a sim um save it to run as a sim. so how do we save a template template save and we would name this june 2021 mnq um 11 minute 3.0 profit factor. I like to include as many details as possible in the names for, for the templates. Save. Okay. Are there any others we want to look at? Possibly. Let's go over here. Go back to... Uh, oops, that was a different tab. Um, all right. We're back to this. This was the 11 minute. 17... Uh, total trades. Okay, what about this one? Oh, again, right click, open in Strategy Analyzer tab, and it will open here Analyzer 6. Again, the same things. We will add in to plot. So what does it look like if we looked at it right now? We haven't clicked run. What does it look like? Well, we can see the analysis of the best times for trading and everything. We can see uh, the exact trades, how many trades. Um, we could look at you know, the, the long and short. We could look at what the best times, half hour of the day. Start to drill into this. I would definitely let this run on a SIM account uh, between 6.30 a.m. and 8.30, I'm on mountain time, so that's market open for the first hour of session. Um, so for sure that's something to look at. So what does it look like if you go to chart because we haven't plotted anything? Well, you don't really see it. You see the entries. Um, it looks like we do still have the, the bid prices is still showing up, which is actually a bug because um, it shouldn't be. So now we've selected these. We hit run again. And we're going to see the actual setup. We're going to see the high. We're going to see the low. And it hit, you know, it hit the bid price over here. It entered, hit the profit target here. Um, and we can go through. This one had 59 trades in it. So um, because it was on the EMA, it went short. This is the 850 EMA. It went short here. And it actually hit a profit target. That's, uh, I think, the profit target. Um, well, it's, a, it's a pretty big bar, so it's hard to know. That looks like a market open bar. Um, looks like we also went long over here because we were above the EMA. And we stopped out. Okay, so this kind of shows us all of the different setups and trades. What I like to do... When I'm running these, um, and we don't have time for it today, but what I like to do if I'm ever going to go live with something 
is I like to look and sort by, go to uh, trades in the summary here. And I like to sort by, uh, first of all, I like to see where, where, where I'm exiting at. Am I exiting because of a profit target? If you're never hitting your profit target, you might want to change that or adjust it. All right. So it looks like I'm hitting the profit target quite a bit. Sometimes I'm exiting on close. Sometimes I'm hitting a stop loss. Um, so I like to look at the profit and loss here. Sometimes I export this to Excel. You can export this to Excel by right clicking and clicking export. Okay, so that can be very useful because uh, you can then do all kinds of Excel calculations. Uh, sometimes I've done other setups where I've imported volume and things and, and you know run my own sort of back testing. But you can export it and then look at your biggest losses. Okay, so these are the biggest losses we've had. Um, looks like exit on close. We didn't hit the stop loss on these, but these particular ones, um, you know, again, looks like we had some pretty good profit too overall, but those are the biggest losses. So you can look at the entry time and the entry date and go to that date on the chart and see if there's anything that you could imagine would be, uh, you know, help you out in terms of, of setting that up, right? So um, five, nine, five, 10. This one happened within an hour, uh, 525 AM to 645 AM. Uh, so basically look at where your worst losses are and go and see if there's anything that, you know, the problem is sometimes you change too many things and now you're, you're not missing, you're missing out on a lot of the ones that were the setups for the profit, right? This is why you're optimizing. Because you want, it, you want to, to, to find out the most profitable situations and trade setups. But at the same time, uh, once you start trying to eliminate and, uh, every single loss, you know, every single trade is not going to go perfect. You're looking at it going perfect over time, right? Uh, but not perfect, but, you know, you're looking at it going in your favor over time. Um, but uh, that's why we have the SIM accounts and that's why we, you know, we optimize and things like that. So that's what I would suggest for that. You can get into some other really cool stuff. The Monte Carlo, um, a lot of the stuff is in, is part of Ninja Trader, all of the strategy analyzer. Um, so I would suggest checking out the videos. I had mentioned earlier, we're going to do uh, some other setups for multi-function, or I'm sorry, multi-objective and walk forward optimization, but I am going to save that for another video. Uh, we've just run over on this one and I want to get started uh, a quick, quick demo on how to go and now set this up on a live SIM account. So I'm going to do that now and I will come back to you in just a minute. Okay, previously in the other video, the second video of the series, we created, uh, you know, we had enabled strategies on the chart itself, but you don't have to do it that way. You can enable strategies by going to the strategies tab right in NinjaTrader. So from here, we can click new strategy. Okay. And we're going to choose Epic Bid because that's the one we've been working with. And if you remember, you previously had to click enable uh, on, when you're enabling it in the chart, but you don't have to here. Okay, so we're going to click template, load. We're going to do the 11 minute. Uh, we named this one June 2021 11 minute MNQ. Okay, it's going to load the template. So this is the whole main reason why you save templates and why you download them from us because we've had our servers running optimizations and we keep them quite updated for everybody. Uh, if you have the trial version, uh, it's about 30 to 60 days at least um, uh, in terms of the days for backtesting. If you have purchased a license or you're a subscriber or have a lifetime license, then we have um, really up-to-date templates available that you can download once you sign in with your login. Uh, the, you go to the same page, slash templates, but you'll see a different download for that. Okay, so here we have our setup. Now, I like to use a SIM account 
You can use you know whatever SIM account you, you want. I like to create many SIM accounts. Um, check the uh, you know you can check Ninja Trader for how to create SIM accounts. We can do a video if you guys need to. I like to set it up with details inside the name. Sometimes I'll include the the strategy I'm going to run in the name. So Epic Squeeze. Sometimes I include the instrument M2K. Sometimes I include the the, the minutes. I like to include as many details so that later on. Um, we can you know, get as many details as possible. So this is an 11 minute, and I'm gonna enable it on SIM 11 minute. Um, I believe on this, we can do on bar close. That'll be a major performance um, uh, setup because it's not like an intra bar sort of granularity or uh, a setup. Epic Bids, putting that bid in place um, ahead of time. It doesn't really have to be on Price change, but you know, again, what it optimizes best for you, run with that. Okay, so here we can enable this by clicking OK. Um, and instead of enabling it directly in the chart like we did before, we right click and we click enable here. Now, I want to show you a very cool tip. So, we just set up one strategy to run on an 11 minute data series with the 11 minute chart, right? Uh, I'm sorry, 11 minute SIM account. So how could we set up more simulations without doing more work? I mean, we already created the template. We know this optimizes well. We don't really know that it optimizes that great with the other uh, contracts, other futures, but what if it did? What if this setup did optimize pretty well with the other um, instruments. You could, um, of course, your server would depend on this and, and the performance, and I definitely would say on bar close in this case if you're, if you're wanting to do multiple instruments. But if you were looking at uh, futures for MNQ, that was the 11 minute. Let's just load the five minute. You could, again, run, let's see, SIM account could still, we could set that to be SIM five minute. Okay, back to on bar close. We're not gonna get into things about tick replay, any of that stuff, so I suggest you check other videos. We are gonna work on some other videos that, that focus on that but they really need their own time for that. Um, Ninja Trader does have uh, a lot of videos on market replay, tick replay, um, strategy analyzer, optimization, things like that. Okay, so here's the cool tip I'm gonna show you though. The same thing as when you were running the optimizer for back testing, we can run this entire set of futures on the same setup. This is why I really recommend using ticks and percentages and not currency and dollar prices for the setups. So now, what's gonna happen when I click OK? We're gonna get all the futures set up to run on that sim, and they're all gonna show up <coughs> like that. <laughs> I didn't pause for that. Um, so now, we can go and we can enable all of these to run. Uh, again, check your performance. Make sure it's not impacting uh, your entries, for sure. I think with Epic Bid, you'd be okay with this. Uh, we've run 250 instruments um, running on our servers uh, against, and that was running through TD Ameritrade so, uh, for stocks. But with Epic Bid, you know, you're, you're checking on bar close, and you might have a data series that's, that's larger. If you were running obviously a one minute data series on an intra bar sort of setup on on tick on each tick or on price change you're not going to be able to, to set up something like this um, or you're going to really face some performance issues so um, with that i'm going to go ahead and uh, leave uh, leave the rest for the next few videos so we'll cover some more advanced optimizations some more uh, advanced setups and we'll start to move into other strategies besides Epic Bid here. Um, so, hope to see you trading. Hope, to, uh, hope Epic Bid is going to help you out. 
Um, remember, we are working hard here to, uh, to build these indicators, these strategies, and create videos for tutorials. If there's any tutorials, strategies, setups you would like to see us uh, do a video on, please leave your comments below. Um, like, subscribe, and uh, we will be in touch.